By now you've probably heard the term chord melody playing. Chord melody, what is that? What's that all about? Well, actually, believe it or not, every time we play the ukulele, we are playing chord melody. You see, when you play a chord, like an F chord, the predominant note that stands out is that note right up there on the first string. It's high. It's the highest note. It's up on top of the peak of the mountain there, the chord. So you hear that resonating above the rest of the chord. Then when I play a C chord, once again, that note up there is the one that we hear. I play a G seventh chord. That note, second fret of the first string, is, is a melody note. It's, it resides on the top. So we play the melody. Or we combine it with the rest of the chord. And there you have chord melody playing. It's simply that. It's nothing more than that. Now, you can play it simply enough with just the thumb. Or you can combine it into an actual strum. Whatever strumming pattern you want. So that really is chord melody playing. It's all it is. Now, when you want to play notes higher up, you want to play upper uh, voices of the of the chord. You have to do a little bit of a little bit of creative uh, chording here. So what we do here, what I'm doing there is I'm barring the fifth fret, and my little pinky at five, six, seven, eight is up on the eighth fret. That is also an F chord. It's just an upper inversion. Now that's simply. The fourth, the third, and the second are open. The ring finger is up here on the seventh fret of the first string. Guess what that is? It's a C chord. It's another, it's another inversion of the C chord. So we start with an F up here. Then we go to a C. And then we do this. We bar the first three strings at the second fret. Put the middle finger on the third fret of the second string. Now that's a G chord. If you look at it this way, there's a G chord. It's the same thing. And what I do is I add my little pinky up on the fifth fret of the first string to get the melody note. So it's writing on top. So we have, and then we end on C. So we go, then, There's chord melody playing. It's simply that. Now, what uh, this is just a little simple exercise to explain it, but it's also uh, a means to us learning how to become comfortable with chord melody playing and improvisation. Improvisation means to make up your own your own melodies and make up your own chord changes to develop your own little uh, personal pieces of music, your own little compositions. And play around with chords. Key of F, by the way, is an ideal key for chord melody improvisation. It's a really, really good key. So you can play, um, you go. Or you can go. You can pretend that you've got another melody going up there. That F. So play around with these little chord changes that I've given you in the key of F. Remember the G with the high melody note. And there's the F chord, bar the fifth fret. Little pinkies up here on the eighth fret. Then we go to the ring finger on the seventh. That's a high inversion of C. Then we go down to the G chord. And then we end on C. So there's a brief introduction to chord melody playing. I would challenge you to come up with your own chord melodies. Improvise, play around with them. Now most chord melody pieces will um, play on the first string, but like quite often the melody jumps over to the second string. And there you've got to be a little careful in terms of which strings you play, because you do not want to play the first string 
if the melody resides on the second string. That takes a little work. Later on I'll show you some little chord changes and chord melody lines that you can play that involve the second string as well. So there you have a brief introduction to chord melody playing. Um, I utilize this form of uh, chord structure in all of the chord melody arrangements that I've done on all of my collections of the, my chord melody series. There's three of them, book one, two, and three, and um, also the Christmas chord melody book. And they all utilize that same, same uh, technique of building the melody up on the first and second string, mostly the first string, and then utilizing these higher inversions of the chords to get the higher notes on the fingerboard. So there you have it. Happy strumming. So how does this look in tablature notation? Well, take a look at this next example. This is the melody only. The melody only. The top line is standard treble clef notation. The bottom line is tablature notation. The numbers indicate the frets. The lines, the, the horizontal lines indicate the strings. So the first string that you see on the top, or the first line, is actually the first string. The first string. And then it goes to the second string, then third string, and then the bottom line is the fourth string. Now, if you see a zero, that means that string is open. It's not fretted. It's an open string. So the very first one, so it goes zero, zero, three, three, two, two, three. Then it goes, that's eight, seven, five, and three. That's just the melody. So take a look now and try this in the melody only tablature format. Now let's take a look at how that would be when you add the melody to the chord. How would the tablature look? Once again, the first stave on top is the treble, standard treble, you can play it on the piano or whatever. The bottom stave is the tablature. The top line being the first string, open, then it goes to the second string, then the third, and then the fourth string. By the way, I'm playing a low G there, so you might have an octave higher. It doesn't, doesn't change anything, because none of the melody of this piece is any, on any other string but the first string. So it goes... Then we go up to the 8th fret, 7, then 5th, and then back to 3rd. So there it is, there's the tablature, as you'll take a look here next and see it the tablature for the chord melody arrangement. And this applies to all of my chord melody books. You can use this as a way to understand how tablature is read and played.